I'd like to call to order the meeting of the September 19, 2018 Federal County Planning Commission. At this time, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, if there's no changes to our agenda, at this time I'll accept a motion to approve the agenda as it stands. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> Next item on our agenda is our minutes. Uh, if there's no changes to any of the minutes that have been read, I'll accept a motion to approve those. Move to approve. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. As we zip through this, we'll go right to our committee reports. I believe we have a report from Mr. Unger for Frederick Water. Yes, sir. We met yesterday evening. Um, Frederick Water has got uh, approval from DEQ and uh, Virginia Marine Resource Commission to be able to pump water out of the Peck and Creek. And uh, they have completed about 60% of that design and has gone out now with reviews. They're going to review that and bring it back sometime next month, I think it is. And hopefully they're going to get started on that soon. And they have been doing tests in the creek, and the water tests are coming back good after they've treated it. Uh, they've nearly completed the design of the new ball field that's going to be constructed to, at the same location as the water plant. And uh, that should be ready uh, to be planned on in the spring of 2020, so that's going to be going along too. Uh, customer base for sanitation is 15,800 connections now. Monthly water use for last month was 6.5 million gallon per day, which is pretty typical for the summer right now. Uh, believe it or not, the, the plant, the quarries are full. <laughs> we went down there a month and a half ago and they were kind of full. They are full now so it's we've got plenty of water for the fall and the winter even if we don't get a lot of rainfall. And they just made a comment that they've really been blessed with the amount of water they've been getting this summer. Some of it's good and some of it's bad but we have been getting a lot of it. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Uh, I don't think we have any other committee reports. On, on here. If not, we'll go to our Winchester Planning Commission liaison, Ms. Wolf. Yes, thank you. We had um, our last meeting was yesterday where we forwarded three CUPs up with recommendation of approval for Dermatology Associates on Amherst at Street um, so they can expand their parking. Our next work session is October 2nd. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Our last report is our Board of Supervisor Liaison, Ms. Trout. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a uh, Planning Commission member at large, uh, a position that's unexpired for your term that will expire 11-14-21, um, so we're looking for someone to fill that position. Um, the Planning Commission business at our last meeting, which was Wednesday, September 12th, we did vote to pass the rezoning for 05-17 for um, Carmoose, Lime, and Stone. We also approved the rezoning 02-18 for St. Paul's on the Hill and approved a CPPA 01-18 for St. Paul's on the Hill, which was a land use designation amendment request. We also approved conditional use permit 08-18 for a trailer drop um, LLC and a conditional use permit. Um, we, we talked about the conditional use permit at Hall Creek Country Market and didn't take any further action um, on that CUP. We also discussed some comprehensive plan amendments in relation to the SWAZA and we moved forward with studying the CPPA for the Carter Track proposal which would be a net zero um, taking some land out and putting some land back in of the SWAZA and then we did not move forward with the Waverly Farm request. We also approved uh, a pump and haul at 165 Caldwell Lane, and I believe that is everything. Thank you. Y'all you had, had a busy night last week. Yes, Thank we you. did. It's painful. Our next item on our agenda is our citizen comment portion. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to make a come before us to speak about any items that's not on our agenda tonight, this is where we open this portion of the agenda to you. So, floor is yours. 
Seeing no one, I'll close the citizen comment portion. We'll go right to our public hearing portion. And our first item is a conditional use permit 09-18 for Carrie Myers and Matthew Gambino. Submitted for establishment of a special event facility in the RA Zoning District. The property is located at 233 Burnt Factory Road, Stevenson, Virginia, and is identified with property identification number 55-A-152 in the Stonewall Magistral District. Mr. Klein. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Again, uh, this is a request for a uh, conditional use permit at 233 Burnt Factory Road. The property is presently zoned RA Rural Areas, and the current land use is residential and agricultural. Uh, the proposed use is for a special event facility for weddings and other similar type events. Directing your attention to the screen, the subject properties are outlined in blue. I uh, will note the applicant owns three properties. The property that we are, where the special event center will be located is the property at the intersection of Pine Road, which forms the northern boundary of the property, and Burnt Factory Road, which forms the eastern boundary of the property. Uh, this is a 45-acre piece of property with a single-family detached residence um, in the Federalist style. It contains a detached garage, a tennis court, and the applicant also has a gated private entrance and drive. For their conditional use permit application, the applicant is seeking the use of temporary tents or special events. They will be allowing the use of portable restroom facilities that will be brought in and removed for each event. Um, they are allowing. They will like to allow outside catering and no alcoholic beverage sales on site, um, although alcoholic beverages can be brought by those renting the facility. And they will be providing a designated gravel parking space, uh, parking spaces that can accommodate additional 75 vehicles. Um, their special event center may accommodate up to 200 persons as noted in their proposal. Again, directing your attention to the screen. For orientation, you have Pine Road on the northern piece of the property and Burton Factory Road for orientation. When you zoom in on the property, again, you have their private gated entrance and drive, which takes you up to the Special Events Center. The Special Events Center is located centrally on their property, approximately 642 feet from Burnt Factory Road and another 629 feet um, to the western property line. Again, uh, they're not making use of their existing home. This will be a Special event Center contained in tents uh, to the rear of the property. Um, and designated parking area. <coughs> this proposed conditional use is consistent with the county's 2035 comprehensive plan, which supports <laughs> opportunities for agritourism and agribusiness on properties in the RA rural area zoning. The applicant has addressed all agency comments, including those related to site access, compliance with building and fire safety code, and the proposed use is generally consistent with the policies and regulations. Should the Planning Commission find this use to be appropriate, staff would recommend the following conditions, that all review agency comments shall be complied with at all times, that an illustrative sketch plan in accordance with the requirements of Article 8 of the Frederick County Zoning Ordinance shall be submitted to and approved by Frederick County prior to the establishment of the use, that an engineered commercial entrance site plan be submitted to and subject to approval by the Virginia Department of Transportation prior to the establishment of the use, that events shall start no earlier than 10 a.m. and all events and related activities shall conclude by midnight. That events may accommodate up to, not to exceed 200 persons. That they're permitted one monument style sign with a sign area not to exceed 50 square feet and not to exceed 10 feet in height is permitted. And that any expansion or mo modification of this use will require the approval of a new conditional use permit. Following a public hearing this evening, staff is seeking a recommendation from the Planning Commission to the Board of Supervisors on this conditional use permit regarding the proposed special event facility. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, and the property owners and applicants, uh, Ms. Carrie Myers and Mr. Matthew Gambino, are here this evening as well, and I believe they have a few comments. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Klein. Any questions for Mr. Klein? No one? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Would the applicant like to come forward and speak to us? Just state your name, Mass General District, if you live here. Uh, my name is Carrie Myers. Oh, I'm Matt Gambino. And y'all live where? In Stonewall and, District. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, yeah, basically, um, <laughs> Mr. Klein covered it all. Um, I know that there were some questions from some of our neighbors. They circulated a flyer, um, and all of the questions were answered in the application. So um, we have no intention of putting a entrance on Pine Road. We're using our existing private drive, which will expand to meet the commercial requirement. All right. Okay. Anybody got any questions for them? You understand all the conditions and agree with the conditions? We do. Will, will you guys be living there? Is somebody going to be living there full time while Vince? We currently live there and we intend to live there. Okay. All right. Forever. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. At this time, I'll open the public hearing for anyone who would like to come forward. Uh, to speak to us, uh, just come forward, state your name, and your Mashdell district where you live. Thank you. Yes, sir. I live on uh, 295 Pine Road. Let's see. I just have a, a couple of very quick questions. I understand that you cannot put, or you're not going to put the drive Sorry, on Pine just Road. Just address your questions here, then we'll take go from there. All right. All right. Put the drive on Pine Road. Mm -hmm. Uh, two questions and the sign is that going to be on burnt factory road okay. and the alcohol use there's a pond on the property will they be allowed to utilize that pond canoes kayaks fish however they deem necessary because I have a concern about the alcohol use on on you know that close to the road because we live directly across from where this is going to happen and I'm concerned about um, traffic on our road because our road was used to be uh, dirt road and it was all quiet back there but things moved forward and, and I understand all that now we're paved and I pick up the road once a week and I get a lot of garbage off that road once a week and I'm concerned about the, the traffic use on that road so all right that's my concerns okay thanks sir you are anyone else yes ma'am <laughs> Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Susan Adamkowitz. I'm in the Stonewall District and I live on Pine Road, 319 Pine Road. I have a few things I'd like to read. It's just better if I prepare that way. <clears throat> um, I believe that this proposed facility event is not appropriate for our neighborhood. Special events like weddings and other special occasions often have bands or other music at the events. Sound travels, sometimes more than we estimate. For example, we can even hear the band playing from the from the school right down on Route Seven. The crowd might be. And this in this event facility is substantially closer than that. Maybe. The proposed the proposed events um, facility application is requiring to hold events up till midnight, <clears throat> sometimes three consecutive days. Some of us get up for work very early in the morning, um, not long after midnight, and all this music and all this traffic would disrupt our sleep. And also an undue burden on our quality of life, making the special events facility not appropriate for our neighborhood. Uh, the weekends would also be equally impacted. Also, our right of enjoyment of our own properties would be unfairly diminished if we were, for example, having a family dinner outside or sitting outside after and relaxing after a long uh, day's work and have to endure the music that could last potentially until midnight. The special events facility application also mentions that they will likely have parking for 100 cars and a mac maximum occupancy of 200 people. The cars would most likely travel at some point on Pine Road and <clears throat> that many extra cars are not appropriate for our neighborhood. It's sort of a small road. While we, while we realize that we are zoned RA, we live in a neighborhood of houses and are not really agriculture and certainly not commercial as in a special events facility. Children often play in the road and people often enjoy going for walks on the road. I wouldn't even want to imagine what might happen if someone unfamiliar on the road was driving after a few drinks. The special events facility um, Okay. Regardless, the road isn't accommodating of that capacity and type of traffic. We have no street lights and road shoulders that often have ditches for draining, and we certainly don't want street lights uh, impeding our dark night skies that we enjoy. We have a nice, quiet neighborhood, and we want it to stay that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, not living next to a commercial special events facility that is not appropriate for our neighborhood it is unfair to impose that on us, and it will negatively impact our quality of life and change for the worse the character of our beloved neighborhood. 
If the committee, despite the objections presented by the neighborhood residents, decides to improve the special events facility that is not appropriate for our neighborhood, I would respectfully like to suggest a few changes to the application. First, instead of the events ending at midnight, I am suggesting 10 p.m. Second, the application also notes that the current entrance on Burnt Factory Road will not accommodate the projected traffic from the special events and either the current entrance needs to be cleared of more trees or another entrance con constructed. <coughs> Please stipulate that an entrance cannot be built on Pine Road. We would be forced to bear the impact of the special events facility enough and if it was approved we do not want 100 plus cars impeding our road for these events. Third, please stipulate that the music be kept at a level that does not extend past the owner's property. We should not have to be impacted by the special events facility that we feel is not appropriate for our neighborhood. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, they can't sue. They can't sue. Anyone else like to come forward and speak? Yes, ma'am. I'm with you. I'm Baker and I live on Pine Road and I also have property on the other side of um, the, the property that they have. So what I just want to talk about is of course the noise and uh, where we live we still can hear the Winchester Speedway so that means we get Winchester Speedway <laughs> on Saturday then we would get special event noise, party, whatever, music. Uh, I don't know how they expect people to sleep in on Saturday or even on a Sunday because uh, the events will be held on Sunday also. Uh, if it starts at 10, that means that they're going to be up even earlier that day putting up tents, doing whatever. And I just needed to find out about um, the road situation because um, like they had said already that on Pine Road we have it's a very narrow road, but also Burnt Factory is even worse. It's very hazardous. Once people see that road or want to know about that road, it's going to be very hard for anybody to get in and out there. They're definitely going to, you know, GPS come right on down our road, Pine Road. So I just needed to find out about that. And, you know, what are you going to do with all the drunk drivers from each event? You know, I got two 16 year olds are going to be driving they're going to be coming home on the weekend coming you know whenever they're at and you know we're going to take that into consideration you know they're you know it's the risk of being killed by a drunk driver on your own road it's not not what I want my children to end their life on my road <laughs> and just needed to find out you know we even have other events facilities on like Jordan Springs is about four four miles away from where we are. And then we also have parks, you know, we have Clearbrook and you have um, Winchester Park. And uh, that's about it. I just, um, I just don't think that this is the good place to have this in our area. And, you know, what's going to happen now? Are our taxes going to go up? What's going to happen? You know, we're all in the not knowing. And uh, it was just, you know, I was told when Mr. Bandino called and talked to me and said that he was only going to use the property to hunt. So, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden we're, you know, event center and, you know, what we're going to do, we're going to have a seven day or three day uh, wine festival happening, you know, I, it's just, it's just not fair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Anyone else like to speak? Yes, ma'am. I just want to start as a cast. Hi. Uh, good evening, Chairman and, and Board Members. My name is Heather Miller, and I am a resident of the Stonewall District. Um, also happen to be a family business owner in Frederick County. Um, so definitely a an integral member of our community. Um, like many of the speakers preceding me, I am also a resident of Pine Road. Uh, Pine Road has 11 homes, and just looking in this crowd, I see... Uh, the majority of the homeowners on Pine Road, not everyone is up here speaking, but the majority of us are represented in, in this um, meeting tonight. Um, and I think that alone speaks to our concern. Uh, we are in a residential area. Our homes are on five or more acres. We live on a narrow, unlined road. Um, 
at night, we sometimes do have individuals driving down very fast. Um, we sadly did have a very serious accident not too long ago, um, actually right outside of our home from someone drinking on this unfamiliar unlined road. Um, having been to weddings at these types of event facilities, people drink, people leave in the dark. As the last spoke, speaker said, that creates a nightmare situation for all of us. Um, having a rural area with music and weddings at midnight is not appropriate. It's not respectful of your neighbor. Um, so great concerns there. If this event facility is put in place, then the roads need to be there for that. When you drive on Pine Road, if the school bus comes down the road, you either need to drive in the ditch or shoulder or stop in the road. Typically, that is, is the space on the road. Um, so we get families coming to weddings, leaving in the dark, perhaps having consumed alcohol. That really creates a dangerous situation when they have a car coming towards them and they don't understand the, the narrow <coughs> characteristics of the road there. I'm also concerned with the water table, bringing 200 people into an area with wells. We talked about water not too long ago there. Um, might be okay this year, but not in the future necessarily. Again, there's 11 homes on this road. We're all pulling from the same area, the same water, and how is that gonna impact all of us? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is Michael Balling. I own the property at 111 Burnt Factory Road, which is at the corner of Route 7 and uh, Burnt Factory Road. I'm the son of Maria Balling, who resided at that property from 1962 until the time she passed away on September of last year. I've inherited that property. The residents of the district formed the special district to preserve the character of the surrounding area as uh, the fellow landowners and residents of Pine Road and Burnt Factory Road have stated, they formed that special district to preserve that character of a rural, uh, essentially a rural area. When I was growing up there from 1962 on, uh, uh, Richard Ritter owned the property next to me and he had a farm down at the corner by the Burnt Factory Church where he had cows and uh, raised grain for them. Across the street was uh, uh, Mr. Baggerly. He had horses and grew corn there. And uh, that neighborhood has changed substantially, but the residents formed the special land use district to try and preserve as much of that character of the properties as they could. The Cornwells lived down the street. Uh, you probably remember Cornwells Grocery on Route 7 here. Uh, Donnie and his brother. And uh, so this is a commercial establishment coming into the land use district. And as the neighbors have pointed out, Burnt Factory Road is a very narrow road. And you're talking about putting a very large entrance into the former McAllister property. And uh, so that would be a substantial impact on the character of the neighborhood. So uh, I do not favor the, uh, the uh, establishment of a commercial enterprise in the district. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's public hearing. Anyone, anyone else would like to come forward? No one else? I'll close the public hearing. We could have a response. We have a lot of questions. I don't know if we want the applicant would like to answer some or would Mr. Klein like to address some of the questions that was asked? There he is. I'll let the uh, applicant speak to their kind of operations um, as it regards to the consumption of alcohol and uh, music and hours of operation. Uh, I can touch on a couple of the comments that were made. Uh, the first is regarding the sign. Um, the monument style sign would need to be located at the entrance to the uh, property, which would be at their private gated entrance from Burt Factory Road. Um, again, as part of the comments from VDOT on the adjacent roads, Burnt Factory Road, Pine Road, 
um, like other event center comments that they've made, um, it'll have a measurable impact, i.e. it will increase the traffic coming and going. Um, again, that, that traffic is, you know, generally 45 minutes to the hour, you know, in advance of the event and about 45 minutes to the hour after the conclusion of the event. Um, the hours of operation are designed to constrain that time for setup, the event, and cleanup where it would have to fall between 10 a.m. and midnight. Um, as part of their, uh, as part of the conditions that have been assigned by staff, and as part of um, VDOT, uh, achieving VDOT's comments, they would need to submit a commercial site plan um, to VDOT for their review and approval. That will that will ensure that there is adequate site distance, uh, looking up Burnt Factory Road and looking south on Burnt Factory Road to make sure that people entering and leaving the site uh, have sufficient site distance. And uh, again, in response to to specific operations of the use, I'm going to turn that back over to the applicant and let them speak to that okay. um, if they would like to add anything that's beyond what I've already covered. Okay. Thank uh, you. What? Just one question for you, Tuff Sandler. Oh, yep. Uh, the comment about the special district, uh, I'm assuming he's referring to the Red Bud Agricultural District. Uh, I don't believe it stretches down that far, does it? Um, I'd have to Is double it. Or any of the adjacent properties in the Ag District? While they answer that question, I will double check that for you and get you an answer. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hodes. Would the applicant like to come forward and answer? So, did you keep track of some of those? I don't, there was quite a few questions you had. One was about alcohol and the pond utilization, uh, how those two was going to mix. I did write that down. So. So our intention is not to allow people to utilize the pond. Drinking in a pond are just a bad decision. Okay. So there'll be no swimming, no any of that? No. Okay. All right. Anyone else got questions? Uh, Mr. Oates? Yeah, there was a concern about the noise. Uh, would you consider uh, having a band stop at, say, 9 o'clock? Sure. Instead of playing until So the midnight? hours were not something that we actually set in the permit. I think it might just be, it appeared in there because of county regulation. Um, my intention was not to go to midnight on any wedding event. Um, so... What hours would you be comfortable with as far as when music would stop and then when the event would stop? In my initial thinking on it, 10 p.m. For music and event or just the event? Uh, for music, probably, and then, you know, allow, because if you consider it a wedding reception, music stopping at 10, and then they would need to be cleared and off property, 10.30, 11 o'clock would be reasonable. Okay. Anything else? That's all questions. Uh, that's what I was going to comment about is the noise. Uh, I don't think it's fair to assume that everybody who leaves a party is going to be drunk. Uh, let's take it in, you know, maybe they will. I would assume that they're going to be looked at for somewhat anyway. What bothers me is more than anything is the noise. And if you could address it to where it would be shut off at a good time. Ten's plenty late, I think, because uh, you are going to get complaints if you keep on. You know, I would recommend doing ten o'clock, and if it does get passed, I'd write it in there like that now. You know, it's anything else. I don't think's a big deal as far as that. Traffic, VDOT's accepting it, so you know we have to do that too. Yeah, we our, our intention is not to ruin a neighborhood. Um, our intention is to be good stewards of the property. Um, and to use the property in a way that can help us as well. So certainly we are amenable to, you know, the consideration of noise. And absolutely, we have no problem with that consideration. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Any more questions? Thank you. Um, can I just address a couple of things that did come up? That, sure. That's what you're um, as far as the sign goes, we actually are not intending to put up a sign. If we do a sign, it would be on our gate, um, which we would have done whether we did a venue or not. Um, we will never access Pine Road. Uh, we have no intention of doing that. There's a fair uh, amount of tree and brush that actually is between our property and Pine Road, and we have no intention of clearing that out. Um, it's a good noise barrier. It provides um, privacy for the property. It also limits access to the pond off Pine Road. Um, I do know that uh, people um, 
have in the past uh, access the pond without the owner's permission. So we're going to leave all of that. Uh, and Pine Road, as far as you know, access off of it will be should not be affected in that regard. Um, the commercial. Someone had mentioned the commercial entrance. Um, it's not commercial. Sounds super threatening. Um, VDOT is just requiring us to widen the entrance and angle it back um, by a few feet. Eight feet. Eight feet. Eight feet. So it has to be uh, from the edge of the road back into our driveway, 25 feet back. It has to be eight feet wide. So we're literally just going to take the gate or the fence that's there. We're going to turn it a little bit and put another turn in, and that's it. It'll just look like a big driveway. Entrance. Just slightly wider. And, and we do need to clear brush and trees for sight line, um, which honestly needs to be done anyway, just for safety for us as well, coming in and out. And as far as the drunk driving, yeah, my hope is that, you know, it is illegal to drink and drive and that people understand that. Um, and that certainly that would not be a huge issue. And, you know, if that's a problem, we would ask for in increased police presence to prevent that because we don't want drinking and driving, period, in our community either. I think Mr. Rhodes has a, has a question. Uh, yeah, would you consider uh, posting a sign on the property for uh, people to exit to the right and head down to seven when they leave? Sure. Because it looks like, I imagine the majority of your people or attendees would are going to head to Route 7. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we have no problem with that at all. Scourge a lot of them from turn left and going to Pine Road or sure. going to Bird Factor. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. Absolutely. We have yeah. no problem with that at all. And also the other thing that um, people were talking about, like the the number of days of events. Um, so our intention is strictly for weddings. Uh, somebody in one of the questions on a flyer had said concerts. No, uh, we are definitely not doing wine festivals. Uh, this is intended to be a wedding venue. Um, and so our current plan is that one wedding per weekend on a Saturday. We're not doing two, three in a day or a weekend. So it would be one event in a weekend and it would not even be year round because we don't have an indoor space. So. It would be a limited, finite number in any given calendar year, I guess. Is that something you're offering up as a condition that it just be once a week? Or if necessary, I mean, it's our plan. It's 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 our quote unquote business plan to offer one wedding per weekend. We don't want to do any more. Okay. That is our intention. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. I heard a couple things there I think need to be addressed that I'd like to hear addressed. Sure, if I can just yeah. respond to Mr. Oates' comment from earlier. The properties owned by uh, Mr. Gambino and Ms. Myers are part of the Redbud Agri Agricultural District. Uh, the surrounding properties on Pine Road, and the properties that border their property are not part of any special district. So it's only their property that yeah. is in that special district. Uh, thank you for clearing that. Thank you, sir. Would you look into add those conditions that you mentioned there, only a right turn only coming out of the property? Are you offering those as conditions to this, to be added uh, to this conditional use permit? Yeah, it sounds like they were agreeable to that. It was a right mm -hmm. turn out to uh, Route 7, uh, limited hours to, to 10 o'clock instead of midnight. And uh, the other one I heard was only an entrance coming off the of burnt factory road. That's in there, isn't it already? I no, I just uh, it's not a condition. Uh, it's not a condition. I'm just throwing. I, it's something I heard to that she didn't was not off and up that they would access off a of pine road. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I would offer that up as a condition as well, since I have no intention of going that route. Um, the one I wasn't quite sure of was whether they were comfortable with doing one night a week as a condition to limit the number of activity, or, or is that something that would you like going back up? I realize you're trying to do a business. I don't want to get so restrictive you, you fail. Is one night a week adequate? I guess if I have my preference, I would request that it not be an actual condition put in there only because um, sh 
should say we have some friends who want to do a farm dinner. So it would be a, like a group of 20 people who would do a farm dinner. Well, that really wouldn't qualify as a special event, I don't think. That's more of a gathering than a, a big. <laughs> I mean, I've had 20 people over for dinner before. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm getting more to the point of uh, a conditional use permit runs with the property, not with you. So if you were to sell this and someone else comes in, the wine festivals, the concerts, that's all on the table because there's no limitations on the conditions. So if this is something that you're comfortable with of one or two nights a week for a wedding, and that fits with what you want to do, then I'd rather restrict it there than leave this thing wide open in case someone ever does buy this property and they decide to go full tilt and have something going every night of the week. There's nothing prohibiting that. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. Um, yeah, if we could say, I mean, if, if you're comfortable with saying one to two, then that that gives us a little bit of leeway. But yeah, I'm fine with that. And and I do agree, protecting it down the line from full tilt is necessary. Yeah, this will run with the property for forever, basically. And yeah, I'm I'm fine with that because I would like to protect the property. All right, uh, so you're agreeable to have a condition then that no more than two events a week? Sure. Uh, Gary, I think when, when they left a while ago, you said they stopped the music at 10. Yes. I don't think they were breaking the party up at 10 yeah. as far as people being there. Mm -hmm. I think good wording would be that the music live or recorded would stop at 10, and yeah. but the event, the center would be open until 11, close at 11. Yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Uh, is it 11 or 11. 11. 11. 11. 11, that's fine. Music stop at 10 and the event closes at 11. Everyone's out by 11. That's good. I think that would make the neighbors happier too. Could I ask a question? Mr. Do you plan on doing events through the week or just weekends? No, oh, just weekends. I'm a teacher. I, I, would, I would rather see the restrictions say events only on weekends than restrict the number of events. Because we, we don't want to get into that fine line of is a dinner for 20 people Saturday afternoon event. And then you know, if you have a rehearsal party Friday night and the wedding on Saturday and an after wedding dinner on Sunday, is that three events? You know, I, I think if we just say weekend events, uh, it gives them Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then nothing through the week. That is going to happen. You're going to get to rehearsals on one Friday and a wedding on Saturday a lot. And sometimes after wedding dinners on Sunday, so, or brunches. So. You're more... Is that more what you had in mind, I would say? Yes, I'm sorry. I was interpreting an event to be... Everything Single associated day. with the wedding on a on a Saturday. Would it be possible to say Thursday, Thursday through Sunday for those rare individuals who'd want to have a wedding on a Friday? Then they could still do the rehearsal on Thursday, and then they'd be done by Saturday. Uh, we call we call this in my world scope creep. We're kind of get, we're kind of getting beyond where I think we we were original. So I think we need to start bringing this back to where uh, we all can be. A, a, an agreeable thing so we're, we're putting a lot of other conditions in here on this uh, I think and I don't speak Mr. Thomas you're advocating Friday Saturday Sunday a weekend yeah, I was thinking weekends okay. and that, that would protect the neighbors for the noise and you know if they do have to get up and go to work Friday morning they don't have the noise Thursday night and then it's it's the weekends and okay. make a motion Kurt you good I'm good I guess Mr. Tyler have you got all this okay <laughs> Mm. Can we go through it one time just to make sure we all got it, Mr. Klein? Because <laughs> <laughs> we've had a lot. Of... Write it down. Yeah. It would be uh, the current conditions that are specified in the uh, staff report with amending condition number four and limiting it from 10 a.m. with music stopping by 10 p.m. and all events and related activities concluding by 11 p.m. Uh, and then adding a condition regarding that the applicant post a sign directing traffic out of the property um, southbound onto Burnt Factory Road towards Route 7, and that the entrance, their commercial entrance, uh, amending number three to say an engineer commercial entrance site plan for the entrance from Burnt Factory Road only shall be submitted to and okay. approved by VDOT if that's that's agreeable. And, uh, sorry, in, in regards to the hours and limiting events to weekends, Friday through Sunday. That's correct. Okay. I think we got it. Thank you.
Thank you. And with that, it's been a good discussion, but we're time to I'll entertain a motion. This is Stonewall. Uh, based on the revised uh, conditions, I would move for approval. Second. Well, in time for a vote, since we haven't heard from Mr. Moan. Uh, Moan, no. <laughs> Dawson, yes. Triplet, no. Thomas, yes. Oates, yes. Karn, yes. Manuel, yes. Ambrose, yes. Marston, yes. Hunger, yes. Chair votes no. I believe the motion passed, so go on to the to the board. On, I will go to the board on October 10th, 2018. Thank you. Thank you for all participating. Next, uh, it's, it's another. Our next item is also a public hearing item. It's conditional use permit number 10-18 for Diana C. Kilmer for a dog kennel. The property is located at 161 Sorrell Lane, Winchester, Virginia. The property is identified with property identification number 77-1-4 in the Shawnee Magisterial District. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioners. Yeah, this is a uh, property that's located um, on Sorrell Lane. It's uh, currently zoned RA, rural areas. Uh, the current land use is residential. Um, as you pointed out, this is going to be proposed. Uh, use will be a dock kennel for boarding only. Um, the property is surrounded by RA zone properties. They're also residential in nature. If I could turn your attention to the map on the left, property is highlighted, is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, highlighted in blue. Um, Soul Lane uh, runs in front of the property. Kennels are permitted use in the RA zoning district with an approved conditional use permit. Uh, the zoning ordinance defines kennels as a place to prepare to board, house, house, breed, and or otherwise keep or care for dogs for sale or in return for compensation. Uh, this proposed use uh, will take place on a five acre parcel. The properties immediately adjacent to this proposed conditional use permit are currently zoned RA. The nearest residential dwelling being approximately 119 feet to the west from this proposed kennel. This adjacent property, though, is, is owned by the applicant. There's a property also north of this kennel that is 514 feet from this proposed kennel and is surrounded by natural woodlands. The applicant is proposing to construct a 25 by 55 enclosed kennel with a fenced area to initially house 18 dogs. Stru the structure could be expanded to, or a new structure added to allow for reporting of 30, up to 36 dogs. <laughs> the applicant wants to start out it was with 18 and ha in the future go you know, up to um, a maximum of 36, and that's why it was added as you see the conditions to save the applicant from coming back in front of this board you know, or the board of supervisors for the, the, the famous, uh, shall I say, lasting expansion of a conditional use permit you need a new one. So, this is a sort of an aerial picture where the applicant uh, has their little the five acre farm where they're going to put the kennel. Should the planning commission find this use to be appropriate, staff would recommend the following conditions be assigned to this conditional use permit. All review, act, all review agency comments shall be complied with at all times. This conditional use permit is solely to enable the boarding of dogs. Number three, no more than 36 dogs shall be permitted on the property at any given time. Number four, no, no employees will be permitted with this conditional use permit. Number five, all dogs should be controlled so that not to create a nuisance in any joint properties by roaming, free, or barking. And number five, all dogs must be combined indoors by 9 p.m. Number six, the hours of operations should be, for the public shall be from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. And number eight, any expansion or modifications conditional use permit require a new conditional use permit. The applicant was... Uh, advised on these conditions and has accepted them, and the applicant, uh, Ms. Dana Kilmer, is here to answer any questions, Mr. Chairman, you or any planning commissioners may have on this condition of use permit and staff's available for questions. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Chairman? Chairman, any discussion about how early in the morning is too early, or, you know, is 5 a.m. too early to be turned out? Uh, any discussion along those lines? It's okay. oh, sir. Just curious. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? When you say boarding, year, month, week, day? Well, I'll let the applicant uh, answer that for you, Mr. Morrison. 
Anything else, Mr. Chair? Thanks, sir. Would the applicant like to come forward, please? State your name. I'm Diana Kilmer. Um, most of what uh, this is about has already been discussed. Um, the all dogs must be confined indoors by 9 p.m. I would like to ask that that be a 10 p.m. time. And um, someone over here asked what time in the morning. And I think eight hours um, from 10 p.m., so 6 a.m. is when I'd like to be able to allow the dogs out. Um, dogs that come to a kennel are house trained, and it would only be appropriate that the dogs be allowed out within eight hours. Um, I absolutely understand the need to be a good neighbor and to keep the, the dogs barking at a minimum. Obviously, if you're going to have a kennel, you're going to have dogs barking. Um, my intent would be to do a final potty call at 9.45 to 10 p.m. So just a very brief go out, do your business, come back. And the same thing with the, the morning turnout would be a 6 a.m. Everybody go out, everybody come back in for breakfast, and then they don't need to go out for a few hours after they've eaten. So um, that's addressing that. I see almost all of my neighbors here, and I'm a little surprised. Um, so I am interested in their concerns, and I would address their concerns or any of your concerns. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions for the applicant? Not yet. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thomas? What type of, I see on the building, the floor plan you have here, that it's a, looks like probably a steel frame building with OSB exterior. Are you going to have any type of insulation and sound attenuation in there, or what is the construction going to be? I, I haven't hired a contractor. I've talked to many. Um, right now, I'm hoping for a uh, cinder block building. And um, so the cinder block up to six feet, and then, of course, insulation because it'll be a climate-controlled space. And, of course, when the dogs are in their house in the inside, um, it would just be like being in a, a house. So there would be very little noise when they're in, they're in the building. The, the uh, house they're going to be in in the building, Yes. is that uh, chain wire mesh that they can see each other or is it a solid that they can't see each other? I mean, kind of when if you have 18 dogs and one starts barking, you're going to have 18 dogs barking. Yes. Um, I will have what they call fight guards between every kennel. And the front of the kennels will be up approximately four feet. And so line of sight will be limited. Um, it, between dogs, they will not be able to have any contact. And across the hall, my intent is to, to have some kind of a barrier. So very limited line of sight. Um, that's my intent. And so fully enclosed, um, actually a wire mesh um, with solid between each kennel. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? I guess just one. Are you boarding any particular kind of dog or just whoever's got a dog boarded or what? Uh, right now it's just um, whoever goes on vacation and needs a space. Um, and so right now it's just pets. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. This is a public hearing. At this time I'll open the public hearing. Anyone would like to come forward and speak to us about this item? This is, the floor is yours. Just come forward to the microphone, state your name and Mass Shell District, please, or address. Good afternoon. My name is Roger Dick. <clears throat> I live at 294 Sorrell Lane. Uh, my wife and I have lived there. Uh, I have uh, been there since 1978, which is when I built the house. She joined me in 1990. Uh, 
there currently are 10 houses within the main part of the subdivision. There are two additional houses that are part of the subdivision but do not utilize our entrance road into the subdivision. They come off of uh, Buffett Road. Uh, <clears throat> of the 10 houses in the main subdivision, uh, only four have been resold. Two of them are owned by the current occupant uh, for this permit. Um, <clears throat> the other six are, you know, have been original residents since they were built. Uh, we enjoy our quiet, private neighborhood. Uh, we have all worked hard to uh, raise our families. Our, our families have moved on. We are now mostly all retired or semi-retired. Uh, we're looking forward to spending a quiet, peaceful, uh, isolated area in our little small subdivision. Uh, <clears throat> this subdivision, we have maintained the roads ourselves. Uh, we've been fortunate to be able to do that to uh, kind of control costs to everybody, to keep it affordable for everybody uh, while they were trying to uh, raise their families and live through hard times that, uh, you know, work stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have several concerns. Uh, the main one is uh, the negative impact it may have on the value of our property if we were to decide somewhere down the road uh, to resell. Uh, I'm concerned about the added traffic that would be coming in and out of our roadway. This roadway is owned by us uh, and maintained by us, and I'm very proud that uh, that road is in very good condition. <clears throat> uh, we work hard at taking care of that. <clears throat> I also have a concern about uh, it's stated in the application that there would be uh, restrooms available for the public on site as to what uh, these restrooms will consist of. Are they porta pots or are they uh, something that's used within the house that's currently on the site or what? Um, <clears throat> I, have, <clears throat> excuse me. I have concerns about barking dogs and anybody that thinks dogs will not bark or not in reality. Dogs will bark, especially when they're around dogs that they're not accustomed to being around in a strange environment that they're not used to being around. Uh, I have nothing against dogs. I've had a, I had a pet myself that I had for 17 years. I had to put him down because of health issues. So I have nothing against dogs. <clears throat> but uh, I, myself, and I, I think I can speak for the, the other residents in the in the. Uh, uh, subdivision and I encourage them to come up here and uh, respond to but uh, our residential subdivision is not a place for a dog kennel uh, you know uh, <clears throat> uh, like I said you know we're not here to, to uh, cause bad feelings amongst our neighbors we have a good bunch of neighbors uh, Diane included uh, you know everybody seems to get along we you know work together to accomplish uh, what we need to accomplish in our subdivision uh, so with you know in closing I ask that you allow us to continue to enjoy the peaceful community that we live in and not issue this CUP permit for a dog camp. So thank you for your allowing us to be here to uh, present our concerns and voice our opinions. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to come forward? I'm Ronnie Nichols, and I'm Diane's neighbor. Um, I'm not for it because of the noise. And from my house, I can see the whole view of this dog kennel. She stated it's, it's uh, trees around it. It's no trees around it. It's shrubs on the fence road. Uh, I'm concerned about the road, and I'm concerned about the value of our property. We've got enough dogs in the subdivision and animals now. We don't need no more. And that's what I'm really concerned about. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anyone else like to come forward, please? Yes, my name is Donald Dick. And, uh, I've been there since 1976 when we built the house. And I, too, uh, agree with my older brother <laughs> <laughs> that we have a wonderful subdivision, close working relationship with all the neighbors. Diane and, and Kim included, but we all agree that the kennel is not, not the right thing for the subdivision. All right, thank you. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? This man. We'll take this man first. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brenda Message, Stonewall, or uh, Shawnee. We live a little bit behind them. 
What concerns me is waste disposal. I'm the first one's probably got more different species of animals than probably all my neighbors. Um, manure is a thing that has to be dealt with properly, fertilizer, whatever. But um, my biggest concern is what would be, uh, 36 dogs are going to make a lot of mess. Um, when you've got to clean the kennels, you know, usually I'm, everybody hoses kennels off, applies a product, disinfectant, whatever. Um, what kind of impact is that going to have? We're all on wells, too. Okay, so that's my other one. Um, yes, the noise would be a problem. One of the reasons we moved there several years ago, we're newbies, four years, sorry, but um, we hear Winchester Speedway Saturday nights, if the wind's blowing the right way. Sometimes you can't even tell the race. We have the airport. Student drivers scare me, oh, two times a day. Um, you know, the good pilots, they don't scare me so much, but so we've got that little bit of noise going on lately. Some pretty big helicopters fly in and out. Um, so it's already getting noisier just through the progression of life. Um, she has a beautiful ground. She keeps her pastures, everything really nice. But like I said, with the, the noise, the environmental impact of the cleaning, and then what are you going to do with the actual your solids and everything? That's it. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My name's Margie Galderisi, and I've lived back in that subdivision since 1978 also. I built back there because it was a private subdivision on a private road. Um, all of the uh, homeowners back there are uh, work together very hard to keep the road maintained. It is not maintained by VDOT at all. And we enjoy our privacy back there. Um, the noise would not impact me too much because I live at the back of the subdivision, but I do know that dogs do bark and make a lot of noise and it would impact my other neighbors. Um, I'm also concerned about the runoff from the uh, excrement from the dogs because we are on well water also. But we would like to keep our subdivision as it is. It's not really on a private road. It's not a good place for a business. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. This is a public hearing. Anyone else like come forward? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, uh, I am vice president of the Winchester chapter of the Isaac Walton League, Chris Baltrop. Uh, our major concern is with the runoff because that runoff apparently would go into the creek that feeds our lake. Uh, the lake is a fishing lake which is used by scout groups and various other groups to train on fishing. It's also used by our 775 members, or many of them who fish. Uh, that lake then flows into the Opequan uh, Creek. If the creek that runs into our lake is converted into an open sewer, then we have a real serious problem uh, with uh, environmental pollution. That is our major concern. Okay. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name's Amy Van Meter. I actually don't live on Sorrel Lane in the development. I'm on Airport Road directly across um, from where Diane and them live. Um, my primary concern is the noise. Um, they have a few dogs already that are out frequently and barking a lot. I don't know how you can tr control barking nuisance of 18 to 30 dogs. I have uh, questions about the type of building construction and how that would um, tamper down sound while the dogs are inside, as well as like have the frequency of dogs being outside. Are, you, are they all going out at once? How many dogs are going out? Obviously the more dogs that are outside at a time, the louder that's gonna be and disruptive to all of us who live nearby. Um, and also a totally, uh, do not agree with the timing. I realize dogs need to use a bathroom, but the timing and the lateness of having them out as well as coming out too early. Um, and then also, although we are considered a rural area, as everyone has told you, we are obviously very residential. Um, I'm right across Airport Road. When you look at that map, um, we're Sorrel and Airport cross there. So 
um, my property overlooks her property and I'm regardless of where it's situated on there worried about how noisy that's going to be and affect our property values. We built a house and I've been in it a little over a year at that spot. Um, I don't intend to go anywhere but if we ever do in the future um, I don't know who's going to want to live across from a dog kennel so my primary concern is the noise and I don't know what you can do to prevent that. I don't believe it belongs in a residential area. Thank you ma'am. Anyone else? Anyone? Just got two more ma'ams there, so okay. First one. Hello, I'm Kathleen Rivera. I live, um, I'm a neighbor of Diana's. I'm at 160 Bay Court, so our property is um, uh, touching their boundary. Um, I do have a couple of concerns. Um, the number of dogs I think is excessive. Um, 36 I think is too many for the property. I also am concerned about the hours of operation for the for the public, that it's 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. I believe 9 p.m. is too late for a business to be open, especially in a residential area. It should be more like 5 o'clock if necessary, if it's a kennel there. Um, I'm also concerned about the noise, as all of my other neighbors has talked about. And I'm concerned about the value of the homes. If I ever, um, I've only been in my house for 11 years, so I'm a newbie. Um, but if I ever choose to sell, it would be difficult with the kennel being right next to my property. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. My name is Judy Temple, and I live in the subdivision, and I do not think that it is appropriate to have a kennel in our residential area. Um, I'm not too concerned about the noise because I'm a little bit away from it, but I am concerned about the excrement, um, you know, and possibly the traffic coming in. You know, and that, I don't know how much that would be, but it could be a lot. So, um, I, that's my okay. thinking. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> if you do it quickly. <laughs> I'll be quick. All right. I have one additional comment I'd like to make. Uh, the applicant currently has 10 to 12 and has had up to 17 horses on the property. Like dogs, I have nothing against horses. Horses are a beautiful, uh, majestic animal. They don't make much noise. But <laughs> one condition in the application where it says she would not have any employees, I uh, do not understand how she can take care of 10 to 12, 14 horses and 18 to 36 dogs. Thank you. Thank you. Even a brief. What else? Real quick, sir. Real quick. I'll allow, I'll allow just a comment and that's it. Right. I just want to add a little bit of amplification on what that lake is used for. Uh, last time we had a scouting jamboree there, we had 200 scouts camped out there. Okay. Uh, we just had a uh, trailwise group there, about 80 kids that spent three days there. Okay. Uh, we have a, a fishing derby that is open to the public every year. Uh, the last group, fishing group, that came in was actually from the Winchester Sheriff's Department, their Cops and Barbers group, which you may have seen in the newspaper. So for us, the quality of the water in the lake is absolutely critical. So this runoff is a really major issue for us. All right. Thank well, you. Thank you, sir. We've got it. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at this time. Any, any questions? Uh, Fruit. Stronger. I was going to make a comment about there should be some kind of solid petitions between each kennel and there should be insulation on the building to keep the noise at a minimum but with five acres of property and 36 dogs there's no way I can support this thing. Okay. Great. Well, well looking around the neighborhood I mean there's a lot of Barns, a lot of farms out there. I mean, tractors, barn sheds. 
I think if she was going to do 36 horses, nobody would say anything because everybody out there, well, a lot of people have horses, it looks like. Uh, so it just boils down to the dogs. Uh, well, Lord knows horses kick out a lot more than dogs will as far as excrement. <laughs> but my concern would be it's a private road and she's bringing in a commercial use on a private subdivision road that everyone has to take care of. Uh, so that's going to be a burden on the neighbors. Um, but yeah, the rest of it, I, like I said, if she has 36 donkeys, it'd be a whole lot louder and a lot more extra money. And she could do that by right as a farm, I reckon. Okay. Thomas? I agree with a lot that's been said. Uh, I uh, think 36 dogs is too intensive of a use. And I find it curious that you put the kennel 40 feet off a property line, which uh, is going to be fairly noisy for the neighbor on that side. Uh, and <coughs> on a commercial on a commercial use on a private road, I don't think is appropriate. And you know, I, I know horses and donkeys make noise, but uh, they're probably not as annoying as 36 dogs barking. And uh, I couldn't support it. I think it's too intensive of a use for a five-acre lot in a residential development. Before we go much further, I would like to say, and I appreciate your comments. I would like to have a chance for the applicant to respond to some of the questions here because you do have a chance to do that. And I'm sorry for not getting you up here right before these comments. But. That's fine. I, I'm absolutely interested. Okay. Um, as far as the excrement goes, that's considered actually toxic waste. And um, the proper disposal of, tox of toxic waste is to take it to the dump. Um, so there will not be an accumulation of dog manure um, at, on the property. It will be uh, disposed of properly daily. Um, as far as the runoff, of course, we will use water, uh, a power sprayer. Um, we would use a, um, I, I don't have it with me, but there is um, a product that is environmentally sound to disinfect the kennels. And if you use a power sprayer, there won't be a tremendous amount of runoff. Of course, there will be some water, but a power sprayer will allow us to minimize our uh, usage of water and the, use, the, the runoff. Um, we own the property, you mentioned the 40 feet off of um, the one property line, we own that property. And um, I would like to have line of sight on the kennel just because I'm in the barn most days, all day. And it, I would like to be able to look down and see what's going on um, on that property if a car drives up whatever. Um, so for me, um, the close proximity is, is actually a benefit. Um, I absolutely understand that my neighbors are concerned about the, the traffic pattern. Um, it's possibly a moot point, but we own the property we own the property next door, and my parents own the property across the street. And so essentially, um, we it is our properties that will be affected by any increase in traffic. I also don't see this as a, a business where there will be an amazing amount of cars coming and going. I, I think it's a very limited um, traffic situation. Um, the restroom, um, it, it's my understanding that because of the nature of the business, I would not need uh, to have a restroom, so I would not be providing a restroom or a Don's John's or anything else. So I, that's an, a moot point. As far as controlling the barking dogs, dogs thrive on a schedule. And it would be my intent to 
have the dogs in more than out. Um, it would be my intent that they would be on a schedule where they could go out, they could relieve themselves and be brought back in fairly quickly. Um, any other questions? I, there was there was a lot. Um, the, I think you've covered most of. Okay. Yeah, I think you did pretty good uh, summarizing some of the questions. Any questions from our commissioners for the applicant? No one, Mr. Thomas. Again, this is a this is a five acre plot, and Small you say area. you have other property there. Uh, a conditional use permit goes with the property. Correct. So absolutely. the conditional use permit would go with this five acre. Yes, absolutely. If it was on a piece of property that was 70 acres and it was in the middle of it, it would be different. Right. But just okay. just as a reminder, the conditional use permit for a kennel would go with this five acre. Yes, I understand that. If you yes. sold it. Yes, and there is there are actually two full barns between the house and the, that property's house and the kennel, and so there's no line of sight there at all. And there's actually a barn and um, a line of trees between uh, for line of sight for one of the other properties, and several stands of trees for line of sight of the other property, and then there's also a house between. So line of sight is almost um, non-existent for the neighbors, if that helps. Any other questions? Mr. Mo? I said, well, I appreciate your responses to the, to the concerns that you've heard. I, one of the issues that's come up where it's been mentioned is the intensity, you know, yes. the potential of 36 yes. dogs. You, have you considered a, a lesser number? I mean, given sure. what you've heard and, and if you, if you were to consider a, a lower number, what would be the the feasible number for you to operate the kennel well, and I, minimize right, the intensity? Well, right now, um, I have um, a design for 18 kennels, and I would absolutely consider to limit it to 18 if that would help my neighbors. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Well, my observations are that, it, that 36 dogs is just a very intense use of a five-acre five acre lot in a close-knit neighborhood, uh, and particularly one with a private road. And then there were some conflicts in the uh, staff conclusions and recommendations and what the ordinance says. Um, it said, uh, you said dogs, the ordinance says that dogs shouldn't be let out until eight and you said you wanted to let them out at six. Yes. So that's a conflict there with the ordinance. Okay. Then also, um, the ordinance says dogs should be combined by nine, and you said you wanted to let them out at 10. So that's a conflict. And I certainly would want to see some sort of construction and design standards on these buildings uh, in, a, in a close knit neighborhood like that. By that, I mean uh, insulation and that sort of thing. It, well insulated. It, yes. Uh, the building, you know, that I am proposing um, is, um, it's a nice construction. It would be an insulated construction. It's a, a temperature controlled environment. So it would be basically like a small house. Okay. So are you able to uh, agree that they would be confined until, uh, uh, and not let out after 9 p.m.? If I could let them out earlier, I, I need eight hours. You know, the average dog is going to go to bed, you know, with a, a, a normal human um, sleeps approximately eight hours. So most human beings, you know, let their dogs out before they go to, go to bed and they let them out when they wake up. And so I would want um, some ability to do that, um, let the dogs out within eight hours. That's all my comments. And one of my neighbors did mention um, that the, the hours of operation were too late. I agree. Um, I, I'm in bed by 9 <laughs> or 10. Um, I would think 5 o'clock, um, you know, 8 in the morning till 5 at night would be a normal <coughs> hour of operation. And 
Um, here again, I, I don't believe there's a flood of um, people coming and going. This would be people dropping their dogs off to go on vacation. So, you know, pers possibly one or two people driving up the drive at a time. On conclusion, it would be difficult for me to support 36 dogs. That's just too intense for me. Well, should we... Uh, thank you, ma'am. Okay. If there's no other questions for the applicant. As a discussion then, that's where we're into the discussion phase of this, and I heard two or three things there. Some of them still, I'm not quite... The, the applicant is willing to go from 36 to 18. So, I would think that would be part of uh, what we need to change, but I'll, I'm still just a little taken back by the hours. And I guess that's what I'm not clear. I know what you're saying. You want your dogs to be able to go out at 10 and get, come back, wake up at six o'clock like a human being, but that's not what we have in front of us here. We have the dogs confined by nine o'clock and we should not confuse that with the hours of operation, which is eight o'clock. Someone can drop their dog off and pick their dog up at nine o'clock at night. So that's the way I'm reading that, unless someone wants to, Mr. Chairman, is that the way I'm reading that? Yeah, so that someone can be there at 8 o'clock, drop their dog off, and someone can pick them up as late as 9 o'clock at night. Uh, so we need to address that somewhere. So am I missing something? And I'm looking for my commissioners to help me with that somewhat. But it sounded like she was willing to drop it from 36 to 18, and there was operation from 8 to 5. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Tom. I'm, I'm still uh, rather concerned. 18 dogs on a five acre lot with neighbors surrounding. Uh, and a private drug. The, the, again, the CUP goes with the property. And I understand that she owns the two properties there now, and parents or relatives own the property across the street. But five years from now, that can all change. And then we have a kennel 40 feet from the neighbor, which may not be a relative anymore. And we have 18 dogs in a residential area on a private road where, yes, you could have 18 cars every day coming in and out of there, 36 trips. And if I was a neighbor and I was paying for the upkeep of that road, I wouldn't be real happy about that. I wouldn't be real happy about the noise. Uh, so I couldn't support more than four or six dogs as a, as a boarding kennel in there. Uh, no way I could get up to 18. Okay. Uh, so. Mr. Unger. I would have to ditto with Roger on that. Uh, and also, I think we're talking about 18 now for whatever reason. You know, we started out with 36, and a lot of people got up and spoke about this. And now we're going to change it up here to 18. They're talking about it. I'm not sure we're being fair to the neighbors for them to have a say. I don't even, yeah, we're not going about this the right way, I don't feel. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I tend to agree with what everybody's saying. I, I think, uh, I just want to also point out, relative to the last item we had, we had people speak in concern, and we effectively negotiated conditions with that applicant while we were sitting here. So I think we need to be careful and we need to be consistent about how we do that. Um, I do think that Ms. Comer is going in the, in the right direction with this. I think that for me personally, before I could be comfortable making any kind of a positive recommendation, my, my initial reaction was that I'd have a lot of problems uh, with, with recommending approval of this in a residential neighborhood. I would want to know, given the private street and that arrangement, that the neighbors, you know, had some level of involvement or engagement uh, with Ms. Kilmer about how this use or could this use actually work at some number of, of dogs. I mean, I agree that 18, that may be too many. Um, so, but I, you know, to your point, Mr. Unger, I think that, you know, it, it isn't exactly fair to kind of negotiate down to some numbers while we're sitting here. Uh, if if these are items that Ms. Kilmer is interested in, in working through uh, with staff and having some communication with her neighbors, then I'd be happy if it was tabled to allow them all to do that. Um, but as it's in front of us, I'd probably uh, recommend that we not approve this if it were to move forward tonight. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Moon. I think what we've done this in the past is we have been able to alter some of our conditions. Right. Uh, and we try not to negotiate. And I think what we were doing in the last applicant, we did try to uh, alter those to, I think if we were going the wrong direction, we would have heard from the other side of the room <laughs> over here. So I think we're well within our boundaries, but I do that, that. I think if there's no further discussion then, then I'll entertain a motion from uh, the Shawnee District and we'll be voting on what we have here because this is what we're, we're looking at tonight. Uh, one question for uh, Mark Sharon before we move forward. Mark, may I ask you a question? Uh, do you agree that the ordinance says that dogs shall not be um, put outdoors until 8 a.m. and they should be confined by 9? That is what the, that is a condition to sign, a condition of use permit, Mr. Right. Uh, okay. All right, then. Um, I'll yield to the no senior other, is there, If there's no other conversation, I will move for denial of CUP number 10-18. Second. I have a motion for denial with a second. Your yes vote is a vote for denial. Your no vote is a vote for opposing that. And I'll start with Mr. Unger. Yes. Marston, yes. Ambrogi, yes. Manuel, yes. Quarren, yes. Oates, yes. Thomas, yes. Triplet, yes. Dawson, yes. Moan, yes. And a chair votes, yes. The motion is denied. This will go. Uh, to the Board of Supervisors on October 10th for their meeting there. Thank you. Thank you for all that spoke. Appreciate it. Our next item is also a public hearing item. Conditional use permit number 11-18 for the Broadway Group LLC was submitted for Country General Store. The property is located at 4736 North Frederick Pike, Route 522, Winchester, Virginia, and is identified with property identification number 29-A-55 in the Gainsborough Magisterial District. Mr. Klein. Yes, uh, good evening again, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Um, this is a conditional use permit request for a country general store in the RA Rural Area Zoning District. The current land use is residential, and again, we're looking at a 9,100 square foot country general store. Directing your attention to the screen, the subject property is outlined in blue. It is located on Route 522 North at the intersection with Gainsborough Road. A country general store as defined by the Frederick County Zoning Ordinance is a retail business allowed where specified in the Rural Zoning District which sells groceries with a variety of other retail goods. This conditional use permit application is proposing an approximately 9,100 square foot country general store for a national retailer. The applicant is also proposing 37 parking spaces, the installation of a new well and commercial septic system to support their operations, and the necessary site improvements as required and approved by VDOT for commercial entrance from Route 522 North. Again, directing your attention to the screen, this is a preliminary uh, site plan as provided by the applicant to orient yourself Route 522 forms the frontage of the property. Their proposed commercial entrance intersects with existing Gainsborough Road. They're proposing a full movement commercial entrance as again uh, required by and approved by VDOT. They have their parking spaces oriented at the front of the establishment along Route 522 with the retail store set back within the building restriction lines. <coughs> This proposed use is generally consistent with the goals and strategies expressed in the county's 2035 comprehensive plan, which supports the development of commercial type uses in the county's rural areas where they are clustered within our commercial or within our rural community centers. In this case, the site is within the Gainsborough Community Center. The proposed use is generally complementary in the character and scale with the surrounding uses and structures and within uh, the confines of our comprehensive plan. 
directing your attention to the screen. Uh, the applicant has provided two examples of potential architectural treatments for their proposed building, demonstrating that the proposed structure is within the character and scale of the surrounding uses and structures. The sides of the building may be metal, with the front of the building including a brick, mason, stone, and or wood material treatments. Should the Planning Commission find this use to be appropriate, staff would recommend the following conditions. Number one, that all review agency comments be complied with at all times. That an engineered site plan in accordance with the requirements of the Frederick County Zoning Ordinance be submitted to and subject to approval by Frederick County prior to the establishment of the use. The site plan shall address site access, site lighting, screening, landscaping, signage, and trash collection. Building permits would also be required for the building and structures. Uh, number three, the following items shall be submitted to and subject to approval by VDOT prior to the issuance of site plan approval. An intersection analysis of Route 522 North Frederick Pike and Route 684 Gainsborough Road. A warrant analysis for signalization or alternative intersection design for the intersection of 522 and Gainsborough Road. Any agreement needed to address future intersection needs, a complete VDOT commercial entrance site plan checklist, and a site plan addressing any intersection and signalization improvements as determined by the above analysis. Number four, the hours of operation for the general public would be limited to 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week, and that any expansion or modification of this use will require the approval of a new conditional use permit. Following a public hearing this evening, staff is seeking a recommendation from the Planning Commission to the Board of Supervisors on this conditional use permit regarding the proposed Country General Store. I'm happy to answer any questions you have, and representatives from the Broadway Group are here this evening, and Ms. Alyssa Carter has a brief presentation as well. Okay. Mr. Thanks. Chairman, I didn't realize it, but um, one of my real estate brokers is involved in this, so I'll have to recuse. Thanks, sir. Question, Mr. Thomas. Okay. This property is within the Gainsborough Community Center, is that correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay. Uh, this would be a significant capital investment for the developer under a conditional use permit. Since this is within the Rural Community Center, wouldn't it be more appropriate and be more consistent with our comprehensive plan that this be a rezoning and be rezoned to a B1 category or the appropriate commercial rezoning. I, th I think this is a very good uh, use for that area. I don't have a problem with it. I have a problem with the conditional use permit. I really, uh, I think it needs to be rezoned because of a lot of reasons, but basically it's, it's in the, the rural community center, which allows for the rezonings for commercial uses in those centers. And it's also, uh, outside of the scope of what we normally would see as a conditional use permit. I mean, that's a significant capital investment mm -hmm. that uh, really should have some permanency, and the rezoning gives it the permanency, permanency, and it gives the community an area where they have a commercial center that can, can support their needs, and not every time there, there's a little change has to come back under a conditional use permit change. You're certainly within your bounds um, to, to bring up a rezoning. Um, that is certainly an option uh, that is available, uh, that was available to the applicant. Um, they did seek a zoning determination from the zoning administrator in the spring of 2018 uh, regarding their proposed use and if it fit within the definition, the county's definition of a country general store, and it was determined to be within that definition. Um, and again, uh, country General Store is a conditional use, so they're within their rights to seek a conditional use permit uh, because the property is presently zoned RA. Uh, again, I'll let the applicant touch if they'd like to touch on, on why they, they may not choose to pursue a rezoning, but again, I'll let, I'll let them speak to that. Any other questions, Mr. Klein? Just a comment I would have. <clears throat> I agree with Mr. Thomas in lieu of what we just went through with a, another conditional use permit. I think any way we could avoid it at this particular location should do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Klein. And would the applicant like to come forward and speak, please? State your name, please, your affiliation. 
Good evening. My name is Alyssa Carter and I'm with the Broadway Group. Um, I made a little presentation kind of to outline the area and what we've come up with so far. Um, so this is the area showing, you know, the trade area around um, the location of the site. The proposed site, as Mr. Klein um, has on his presentation. Just showing kind of the surrounding areas with the roadway and um, the median cuts and everything around there with the gas station that's um, our neighbor. I'll just flip through these. <laughs> So this is um, our, we have a preliminary site plan. Um, I brought one of our in-house engineers that is working on this project with us tonight. Um, this is kind of just preliminary at the moment. Um, we are working with VDOT currently. Um, we have a traffic study underway this week um, to get some concerns with the traffic. We actually were out there today looking at the property and we agree there are some concerns, um, but we would like to just add that we're kind of not, we're not a destination location. We're a stop and go. Coming um, back home, you're, you work in Winchester, you're driving back out, you need some milk, you need some bread, you can stop by the store and get what you need and go on. So our property is within Frederick County. Um, the property is in RA. We are trying to get a conditional use permit to allow for a country general store on the property. Um, and this is allowed by the zoning ordinance for the RA for a conditional use. So our retailer makes shopping every day a hassle-free experience. Like I said, you forget what you might get at a grocery store. You can run in there, get what you need. We have all sorts of supplies, pet supplies, household supplies, um, groceries, anything you need. We have prepackaged food. We don't have a deli or anything like that. Um, traffic concerns can be mitigated through VDOT's review of our site plan. Like I said, we're working on a traffic study. It should be done by October 5th, so we will know what kind of turn lanes we need, if we need a traffic signal, any of those problems should be um, reviewed in the traffic study. So as a, one of the fastest growing retailers in America, this project will bring about eight to 10 jobs to the community, new jobs, and this will also um, be tax revenue for the county. And that's it. All right, thank you, ma'am. Any coming. questions for the applicant? Should the company be willing to put signalization in if it's necessary? If it's necessary, we will look at that and see um, who will all be a factor into helping us pay for that. Because I know, like I said, we're not a stopping, you know, we're just a stop and go location. We're not a destination location. So um, if that's needed, we will look into that um, before any building or anything like that. Okay. Um, most people are not opposed of your store, and it's probably a great location, a good idea. Uh, I'm still with Mr. Thomas, so I don't understand why you would take a chance on a CUP versus a rezoning. CUPs are not good things in a lot of cases. Well, actually, we were going to do a rezone um, in the beginning, and when reaching out to the staff of the planning um, department, they actually told us that a conditional use permit would be better because we do fit the country general store. Okay. Tom? This is just a comment, but this is probably the only time that Dollar General has ever set, had somebody stand up and say they're a country general store. <laughs> I don't think Dollar General would ever advertise that in one of their national ads that we're a country general store. Just because we have a rather loose ambiguous definition of a country general store, you're taking advantage of the definition. I will say you, that... You recognize that a CUP can be revoked. Yes. You, you can have a million dollar investment there, and if neighbors complain, if you do something outside of the limits of the COP, it can be revoked and you can go out of business there. Yes. And I would like to say that they are today's general store to America. You know, back in the day, you had your, you know, mom and pop shops, but today this is the general store of America. So I'd like to say that. Uh, just one question, if no one else has one, and I'll go ahead. Um, what time of day did you go out there to do these pictures? We went out during school zone hours. So you was out there when the lights were flashing, yes. when the school was early in the morning, you seen the amount of traffic? We were there this afternoon, so when school is being let out. Being let out. Yes. So in the morning, rush traffic coming in from our neighbors to the north, heavy traffic volumes, school, 
what have you. So you've gathered all that? You've seen all that? I have not personally seen that, but the, we are using um, an engineering group called the Timmons Group yes, um, in Virginia, and they have been, they're working on our traffic study. study. They started on Monday doing the traffic counts. And One thing I that. heard <laughs> was if there was a trap, if a signalization was uh, required that you'd be willing to share the cost, how would you decide who you're sharing that cost with? If that was an option, we would love to look into that. If VDOT would have any input, the schools, anything to help us, um, we personally would look at it and see if we could put that in our budget um, and we would go for there. If it's not in our budget, we wouldn't build the store. We have to meet VDOT's recommendations. So, I would think you'd be hard pressed to get shared <laughs> a shared <laughs> revenue <laughs> for a traffic signal that that you're impacting. The reason it needs it is because you're being there. But I would, you know, especially with our budgets, with our schools and our municipalities, the way they are. So uh, that would be one that would uh, definitely need some looking into down the road there. And I think you can't get a signal at the school right now. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt if it pulls anything off at the general store. Yeah, just a comment. So, okay. <clears throat> any other <clears throat> any other questions for the applicant? Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. This is a public hearing. At this time, I'll open the public hearing for anybody that would like to come forward and comment on this application. <laughs> Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and. Stay. If uh, we anybody got any questions, further discussions on this item? Yeah. I want to say that Mr. I agree with Roger that uh, it should be rezoning, not a not a CUP. It should be rezoned to B one. Uh, Problems need to be in place to address any traffic items. Mm -hmm. CUP. It's a little loose. I really wish that they would consider that. I don't even. I don't want to turn this down. I just don't like the way it's being done. I I like the store. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, there's no way I could vote for this as a CUP. There, it needs to be a rezoning. We need to have a proffer in there for a signal. Uh, and, and it's just our definition, if, if this fits our definition of a country general store, our definition needs to be changed. Because this is not a country general store. It's not an appropriate analysis calling it a country general store. Uh, and there's no way I can... I mean, I think this is a great idea. I think it's a be a great ad, addition to that community, but it needs to be a rezoning. I had a question. If you think about the um, 522 South and the schools there, they have traffic signals now. How? Who paid for that? The schools, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and and there's two schools right there, and they need traffic signals. That's a, a very highly traveled road. At a, a high speed, too. Yes. There's a lot of wrecks on that road there. I was in one. <laughs> we'll probably come at some point. I think there's some road work there that needs to be done. Okay. Mr. Moe? Uh, at the risk of being the contrarian this evening on all these things, um, I don't disagree at all that a rezoning is the appropriate way to do it. But you know they do have a determination that this use is is permitted with a conditional use permit. So, from my perspective, they're fully within you know the the zoning ordinance to be here you know seeking approval. So the question is, are the conditions that have been placed on this appropriate to mitigate impacts? I will say that without a traffic study that's done, I have a hard time being able to say that yes it is, and I don't think that we need to move a conditional use permit forward without knowing you know, what the outcomes of that analysis are right. um, and what, if any, improvements might be needed and, and how those might be addressed. Um, so generally speaking, I'm, I'm, in, I'm supportive of the CUP. It's the applicant's risk if they're gonna make the, the investment. Uh, in this, uh, you know, with the knowledge that it could be revoked. In addition to the rezonings, it also speaks to the fact that we've been working with CUPs forever and we have these discussions all the time. And at some point, I think we need to acknowledge that there's a level of land use review uh, that is not a rezoning, but is either a special use permit or a special exception that has some permanence to it with conditions um, that's no longer the CUP, which is the, you know, kind of more cottage occupation kind of stuff that I think we think of. 
that's a whole nother discussion to get into. Um, but I'm comfortable eventually with this, but it's the cap with the caveat that the traffic that traffic analysis is done, and we're comfortable that that impacts can be mitigated. And in, in that case, I'd be comfortable. But without that analysis, I'm not. So, thank you for your comments. Appreciate yeah. it. I think I'd be more comfortable with the mitigation through a proper process instead of conditions because it's got a lot more teeth as a proffer. Agreed. Which would be the rezoning process, so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I would like to say one thing, and I think Chris brought this back to reality, and I appreciate that, Chris. Uh, I think it should be rezoned too, and I agree with most everybody sitting here. But with that said, they are doing what they can do. You can use a CUP. I wish they weren't, but I I wouldn't vote against it if it was put on the board. I I don't like a CUP, but you know they they're in their rights by doing that. I wish they realized the money that could be spent there and could get thrown tore down. I, it's a shame. Okay, but uh, I would agree that they have a right to ask, but just like the last applicant, the conditions that were placed there didn't take care of it, so we have the right to say no. Everyone has a right to ask. Right. And we don't have a traffic gonna... study. We don't have a traffic study. I mean, we have half the, you know, we don't have all the information we need. <laughs> I, I, I agree with what Gary said. They have a right to ask. That doesn't mean we have to recommend approval and CUP is not appropriate for this I will vote against it and I will talk against it any chance I would get uh, I think if they came in with a rezoning with proffers and signalization was probably one of the proffers I mean certainly tonight it's too early to vote on it because we don't have the information we need mm -hmm. uh, you know I, I don't think we should uh, any vote tonight I think should be to postpone it until we have all of the information that we need but even at that I will still vote against it as a conditional use permit. We need to be able to have the proffers to get the conditions that we need there. That standpoint, the best thing to do is withdraw it and come back with this rezoning. Yep. Yeah. So, questions? If there is none, this is Gainsborough, and this is yes, not an easy one for well, Gainsborough. This is interesting, naturally. I don't want to hold up this building because I think it'll be a good thing eventually. But I just, I'm like so many I feel that are against or not for the conditional use permit if we can avoid it. So what I'm going to do tonight, so postponement or can we postpone it for 90 days or what would be the I'll, I'll refer back to Mr. Klein or Ms. Perkins on that, but I believe you're well yeah. within that. Rod, certainly correct me if I'm out of bounds. Um, you could certainly postpone it. Uh, as the applicant stated, they have initiated uh, their traffic study. Uh, they've hired a local group, Timmins, out of Richmond. Uh, they've already initiated their discussions with VDOT. They're working through that list of conditions uh, that was stipulated by VDOT and included in our recommendations, um, I'll have to, you have to ask them if they're okay with the postponement. They cer you certainly could do that and wait to see the impact of the traffic study and what improvements may be needed uh, prior to taking any action. Yes. Clear that we, if we do postpone, have a reason for that postponement that we include with your motion. What's it? Traffic study. For the yeah. traffic study. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you had asked us about a. Um, no. Wait a minute. No, okay. I apologize. You had asked us about the postponement. They would accept the postponement. Okay. So we postpone it. They don't have to accept it. So there's complete control here. She threw me for a curve there. All right. Okay. The motion I would make would be we haven't, we do not have all the information that we need to make the proper call for this. So that would be my motion. So you're postpone it until that information for, is presented to us. For 90 days. How many days would you? Uh, let's go for 90 days. That's... No. 
<laughs> Second your motion. So now we have a motion on Let me the floor. Let clarify, right? I have a motion on the floor to postpone this conditional use permit for 90 days to allow them to provide a traffic analysis study. And any other information that we have requested. To work with staff. Okay. And do I second? And I have a second. It's time to vote. Mr. Moan. Moan, yes. Dawson, yes. Triplet, yes. Thomas, yes. Oates, yes. Pine, yes. Ambrogi, yes. Barston, yes. Hungry, yes. And a chair votes yes. This is postponed for 90 days <laughs> to allow for a traffic impact study. That is a tough. That brings us to that's the last of our public hearings. Thank you. Help me. The other items. Uh, if you is there anybody that has any other items they'd like to come forward? If not, I just have one. If we noticed tonight, we had Miss June Wilmot. She decided that she would like to step down and submitted her paperwork to Mr. DeHaven, uh, to the chairman, and uh, he is looking to fill that seat. And I believe that came up from Mrs. Trout's report. So uh, I'd like to thank Miss Wilmot for all her years of service, her diligent service on many capacities in the county, but uh, she thought it was best at this time uh, to step down and uh, we'll get someone to finish that term. And we also are missing another member of our staff tonight, Mr. Mike Reddy. Uh, he had to go home to England, his father passed, so if we could remember him, mm -hmm. I would appreciate that also. And that being said, at this time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Do I have a second? Do, okay. Do we have... Do I have another meeting schedule? Not at this time. Uh, I have a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye.